We have Microsoft financial sales talk about Ubisoft are taking games offline. Gears is removing a big feature and PlayStation Plus premium game trials. We have a bit more information as to what this is going to mean for the developers. So Microsoft released their Q3 2022 financials yesterday and very good news for pretty much all the areas in there, but focusing particularly on the Xbox side of things, it's very impressive what they've been able to do during Q3 2022. So we look at the overall Xbox hardware, and as we know so far over the last couple of months, Xbox has been outselling the PlayStation 5, and we know that they have broken records for previous highs back in 2011 and 2014 for March with their hardware sales and their hardware dollar unit sales. And we're seeing all of this reflected in their Q3 earnings where the Xbox hardware revenue has been up 14% from a year ago. And the fact that they're up 14% over this time last year, I think is very telling as to how the market is perceiving the Xbox Series X and S as a console that you wanna have. You wanna be able to buy it to be able to play lots of the third party games. You wanna be able to buy it to be able to access Xbox Game Pass and all the value within that service. And I think that's what Xbox was going for. And it looks like they are succeeding because you don't need those first party console exclusives in order to sell these consoles. This is a narrative that has completely been destroyed with the sales of the Xbox Series X and S. You even see PlayStation slowly starting to realize that as they are transitioning over to the subscription with the PlayStation Plus tiers. And I'm hoping at some point in the future, they're gonna be releasing their first party games day and date or at least closer to the actual release dates for their first party games because I think it would be a smart business move for them and just give access to more people to be able to play those games and stuff like this it's just overall good to see that you don't have to lock content to a box in order to be successful with hardware now in terms of the actual content itself they're up four percent which is driven by xbox game pass growth subscriptions and first party titles but overall they're up six percent in terms of the gaming revenue to 3.74 billion so xbox is thriving xbox is back it's bigger than it's been in a very long time. I think it's going to be the biggest it's ever been by the end of this generation. They've really turned the ship around. If you're an Xbox fan, it's very exciting times. You should be very hopeful and optimistic on the outlook of Xbox going forward. And hopefully they continue to deliver content. Hopefully they continue to deliver value. Once you start thinking about more consistent drops of first party games, these numbers I think are going to go up even more than they currently are because that's something that right now it's missing from the lineup is just that big title to get hyped about. And I mean, it's, it's missing across the entire board, not just with Xbox, but in terms of their first party titles with all of these studios that they have acquired, they have so much potential to be releasing something into Xbox Game Pass every three to four months. And that's going to push these consoles and these services even further. So they've done a really good job at that and the competition is greater than it's ever been. When it comes to Game Pass subscribers and how much they have played, Sadie Nadella says here that Xbox Game Pass subscribers played 45% more over the past 12 months, adding up to billions of hours across the year. And I mean, more people are discovering Game Pass. There was also the Forza Horizon release and the Halo Infinite release. Plus there were other big third-party games that were released on day one, like Outriders, like MLB The Show. All of that stuff is going to increase the amount of hours that people are playing on Xbox Game Pass. We also know from the statistics we've seen previously that people just discover more genres and more games that they would have never played before if it wasn't for the service. And with all that being said, this is translated into Microsoft and Xbox taking more market share globally for two quarters in a row. Satya Nadella commented on this and had this to say, with our Xbox Series X and S consoles, we have taken share globally for two quarters in a row. And we are the market leader this quarter among the next gen consoles in the United States, Canada, the UK, and Western Europe. So there was all those narratives after the MPD results that came out that people were saying this is only the United States is and selling out everywhere else, which obviously is false. You see it right here, Canada, the UK and Western Europe. So it's doing great in multiple parts around the world, but they also need to continue to try to grow in other areas like in the Asian countries 
we've seen them release PC Game Pass in Southeast Asia. So they're they're working on that, but then it's also Japan. How are they going to be able to grow in Japan if they really want to become a global leader in the video game market? Now, looking ahead to the fourth quarter, the chief financial officer, Amy Hood, has this to say. In gaming, we expect revenue to decline into the mid to high single digits driven by lower engagement hours year over year as well as constrained console supply. We expect Xbox content and services revenue to decline mid single digits, though engagement hours are expected to remain higher than pre-pandemic levels. So it'll be interesting to see if Xbox can continue to perform the way that they are performing. They're expecting a slight decline, but what will that mean for the entire industry? What will that mean for Xbox's market share? Are they going to continue to be able to take market share from Q3 going forward into Q4? And how are these sales all going to play out? What does PlayStation have in mind right now for getting more PlayStation 5s out to the market? Is that going to change as we go forward? Do they have more stock readily available to ship out to try to counter the market share that Xbox is grabbing with being able to outsell the PlayStation 5 over the last couple of months? All right, jumping over here to some Ubisoft news that they have shut down online services for 90 older games. Now, there's bad news and i guess not so bad news the bad news is that they've shut them down the not so bad news is for a lot of obscure titles on obscure platforms or older platforms that not that many people are probably using and the report we got last week about them turning off servers for some assassin's creed games games that some people still may be playing seems to have been by accident so it says here 90 games across multiple platforms have been shut down with their online services the games will still remain playable and offline features for each game should still function as normal and ubisoft notes here that in-game news and player statistics in each affected game have also been disabled ubisoft connect services units and challenges have been disabled and unlockable content like maps and skins have all been affected in these games which pretty much means if you're on pc you're not going to have access to any of this unlockable content but if you're on console you can still get the unlockable content unless your save file has been corrupted or reset or whatever. Now, in terms of last week, there was an error, and this is one that I saw last week, which was very concerning, but good to see this is an error and that these should be back online. And it was that some games like Anno 2070, Assassin's Creed 2, Assassin's Creed 3, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, Driver San Francisco, Far Cry 3, Silent Thund Hunter 5, and Splinter Cell Blacklist were taken offline for short maintenance and services, but have all been restored now. So you're still going to be able to get those features with those games. And finally, they say here, we will provide advanced notice before shutting down any online services for our games and have updated our support article to reflect this. So if you are interested in what games have been shut down or at least what platforms they have been shut down on, here is where they are now you still see some of these assassin's creed games but they've been shut down on like on live which like isn't even a platform anymore mac ios and on live so the previously they had shut them down i believe on like the xbox and playstation and but they're they're back up now but then we go through this list here 90 games some more significant than others but you look at the platforms that they're being shut down on it's like the wii the xbox 360 the wii u the playstation 3 mac on live right like it's all these older platforms that probably have an extremely extremely small player base so it will most likely not be affecting very many people but the link to this will be in the description below in case hey maybe you're still playing some of these games on xbox 360 and you want to see if it's going to affect whether you're going to be able to get the unlockable content in those games but at the end of the day all this is kind of giving us a glimpse of the all digital future that we are in that we are going forward in that at any time if a game wants the services to be shut down the service to be taken offline you're going to lose a lot of content now of course like i said these games barely anybody's probably playing them so not that many people are going to be affected in the grand scheme it is generally not a huge deal but it does have a little bit of concern if a server goes down they can't get it back up maybe it gets hacked or something and you're not able to access a game or all the content that you played paid for and I mean, you think about the olden days, I go back and I still play Super Nintendo. I still play like the original Xbox and stuff where all the content was on the disc or in the cartridge itself and you didn't have to worry about this stuff. But hey, we'll see what happens. This isn't the end of the world with these titles. Just hopefully going forward with things like we saw with the PlayStation Store, with the PS3 and the PS Vita Store coming off and the worry that you would lose some of the games that you purchased. Hopefully they figure out ways to make sure that people who have purchased games, people who have spent money on older content where they're trying to take those games offline, that you will still 
get access to the stuff that you've spent your money on. All right, and we have a little bit of an update here on the thing I talked about yesterday, which was the PlayStation game trials coming to PS Plus members and how PlayStation was forcing developers to have two hour timed game trials on all games over $34 only available in that PlayStation Premium Plus tier. Now, this has caused a lot of controversy throughout the internet. People are angry calling it anti-consumer and saying that they are locking game trials behind a paywall, which is a bad thing, which I agree with, like locking it behind a paywall for these developers will have a negative effect on them rather than just allowing everybody, no matter if they're paying or not, to be able to access the game trials, which could potentially lead to more people just in general purchasing that game, especially if you're a smaller indie developer. But if you're somebody paying for the PlayStation Plus Premium, having game trials for pretty much all the games over $34, for you is a good thing. I mean, that's something that you're happy about because you're paying for that premium premium plus, you're going to pay for it anyways, and then you get more content with that. But for the developers themselves, having to actually make these game trials would be a negative thing because you're spending more resources on something that you're limiting to people who are paying for the PlayStation Plus premium subscription. But when it comes to that, that was a big concern of mine. That was a big concern, I think, for a lot of people was the effect on the developers. It seems like it may not be as bad as we think as this person here, American Truck Songs H, who is a senior reporter at Kotaku, says here, sources tell me PlayStation Store team will create the two hour time trials for developers. So it shouldn't be extra work. Though I've heard concerns from others about Sony monetizing a perk and not sharing that revenue with studios. So there's two things here. One, good thing that they're not gonna have to have extra work to make those two hour time trials. But then there's still the concern that Sony is gonna be that they are monetizing this perk with the PlayStation Plus premium tier. And then they're not gonna be sharing a percentage of that revenue from PS Plus premium with the developers who have those two hour time trials. And if you look at it like this, that makes sense because if Sony's taking the burden off of the developer to create those time trials, they don't have to pay that developer the money for having to do the work to create that two hour time trial, which I mean, it is kind of shitty for the developers, it's actually kind of anti-developer in a, in a way. I guess the developer is getting the exposure from being on PlayStation Plus Premium, but they're still locking that behind a paywall. So the amount of people that are actually going to be able to play that demo and discover that game is much smaller than if they would just release it out to the entire PlayStation Plus or PlayStation Network database of players. But it's it's going to see how this evolves. I mean, we don't know all of the information how this is going to work but from what we're knowing so far this seems like a pretty anti-developer anti-consumer move overall by playstation that they're trying to spin as something that you should be excited about but let's go here through the comments to see what people say if they're not working extra why should they get revenue this should help boost their game sales if they are confident they made a good game well the thing is there is that they're locking you behind the paywall of playstation plus premium that's the kicker with all of this sure you're giving that two hour game trial but you're giving it to such a smaller group of players that you could easily just do that for every single game and then give it out to everybody else. It's probably not that hard to put the two hour game trial on. The response there, by forcing them to allow a two hour trial of their game available only to people who pay, Sony uses the game to help subscriptions. If your game is being used to provide value and incentive for their subscription sales, you should benefit too. And that's a great response, that's the thing, it is being used to get people to subscribe to PlayStation Plus Premium. And I mean, we've had demos forever. I mean, you look back, you look back to the older generations of gaming. Demos are just free. You just go to the store, you download the demo and developers were allowed to put those on if they wanted to. So it's not like this is something shiny and brand new that PlayStation is thinking outside of the box and doing, giving more value to customers and more value to developers. It's absolutely not that at all. And here's another argument that a lot of people have been bringing up and it has to do with Steam saying here, it pretty much puts them in line with what Steam already offers, where you can play a game for up to two hours and still return it if you're not satisfied. Right now on PSN, once you've downloaded a game, there's no going back unless there's extreme circumstances. So that's something I didn't think about either is that yes, Steam does offer that. You can play a game for two hours, any game, and you don't have to sign up for a subscription, which is essentially the exact same thing because then you could just return it after. It's just essentially just a free game trial to see if you like it. I have to imagine it will drive sales. That's the revenue sharing, but to who? To what percentage of people? That's the thing, because it's gonna be a smaller percentage of people. 
signed up to PlayStation Plus. So it's going to be interesting how this all plays out. A lot of people are negative on it, and it almost seems like there isn't that big of a positive takeaway from this from a developer's perspective. The only positive takeaway this is, is that if you are going to be a PlayStation Plus premium subscriber, this is a perk that you will most likely enjoy. All right, to end things off here, let's talk about the coalition as it seems like they are removing a Gears 5 feature to focus on future projects. So this was via their Twitter account yesterday and they say here, PSA, we're removing Gears 5 map builder and unlocking its achievements for all players as the team focuses on future projects. If you've compiled, I made it all by myself, you'll receive an exclusive banner. And if you've completed Homegrown Hive, you'll receive 10K coins in game. So if you are using the map feature, obviously you will be disappointed, but the way that they went about this, I think is probably better than we've seen other games go about disabling content, which is giving you extra content, but at the same time, unlocking all the achievements. Cause that's the one thing I think people get the most pissed about when a game goes offline, a game mode stops working or whatever, is that you can't get those achievements that you want to get. You can't think about get going back to games in the future and unlocking an achievement. I do that all the time. Like I don't ever really 100% all achievements in, in games. I just play too many games. I don't have enough time to do it, but I do go back. I do go back and play games that I have maybe 50% of the achievements or 30% or 70% of the achievements to unlock a couple more and do things that I've never done. It just gives you that replay value to be able to jump back in. So yes, you're not going to be able to do the map stuff anymore, but you're going to still have those achievements and you won't have to worry about not being able to 100% Gears of War because they are unlocking them for you. That's it for me, guys. Let me know your thoughts on the PlayStation Plus trials and a little bit of information we got from that. The sales for Xbox, the hardware increase and the overall content increase. Gears 5 removing the maps and the Ubisoft games taking some games offline. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button. If you're new here, you enjoyed what you saw, consider hitting that subscribe button. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for your support and I'll catch you in the next video.